Greetings, viewers. This is Airy TV News broadcast live from the headquarters in Asmara. It's 10.30 p.m. Saturday, the 1st of January. I'm the reporter, Mira Mihannis, wishing you a happy new year. Here's a rundown of the top stories for tonight's English news segment. Announcements from the Ministry of Health. Material support to families of martyrs. Thousands left homeless as rains caused floods in Bolivia. Wind-driven Colorado grass fire destroys hundreds of homes, displaces thousands. Let's proceed to the details for the local news. 15 patients have been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests is carried out today at quarantine centers and testing stations in the central region. Out of these, two patients are from a quarantine center and 13 patients from testing stations in Asmara central region. On the other hand, 17 patients who have been receiving medical treatment in hospitals in the central region have fully recovered and have been discharged from these facilities. The total number of recovered patients has accordingly increased to 7,763, while the number of deaths stands at 76. The total number of confirmed cases in the country to date has increased to 8,026. Ministry of Health, Asmara, January 1, 2022. Material support has been extended towards disabled veterans and families of martyrs in the central and northern Red Sea regions. According to a report from the National Association of Eritrean War Disabled Veterans, Mr. Mikhail Tesfamaram with his wife, Ms. Kenneth Haptitzin, in cooperation with other nationals in the Netherlands, extended bread baking materials worth 150,000 NAFA to war disabled women veterans in Denden Camp. Similarly, Mr. Matthias Tesfai, Owner of Metalwork and Bakery, extended pastry making equipment worth 35,000 NAFA. In the same vein, members of the National Union of Eritrean Women in Canada extended financial support to 10 disadvantaged women in the central region. The disadvantaged women were provided with 3,000 NAFA each. Likewise, government employees in Foro Subzone extended 7,800 NAFA each to three family of martyrs in the subzone. The National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students branch in the Central Region conducted its annual activity meeting of 2021 and plan of action for 2022 on the 30th of December. According to the report presented at the meeting that was attended by representatives for the 16 subzones in the region, in 2021 as part of the Greening Campaign, members of the Union constructed over 4,400 meters of terraces and planted over 5,200 tree seedlings. The report the report also indicated that the various vocational trainings, ranging from one to three months, have been organized in cooperation with stakeholders. The training programs included maintenance of water pumps, beauty salon, computer technology, poultry and bee farming, video and still camera, among others. The representatives of the 16 subzones also presented activity report of 2021 focusing on the effort conducted to curb the spread of COVID-19 pandemic, training programs organized with a view to develop capacity of the youth and other activities. The participants conducted extensive discussion on the report presented and adopted various recommendations. Plan of action for 2022 was also presented at the meeting and the participants also conducted extensive discussion on the plan of action. Stay with us for we'll be right back with the international news after this following short break. Welcome back. At least three people have been killed and thousands left homeless in Bolivia after weeks of heavy torrential rains caused massive flooding. Following this, Peru and Bolivia declared a state of emergency. The worst hit areas are La Paz, Santa Cruz, Cochabamba, Tarija, Cuicusaca and Pando where rivers burst their banks, flooding farmlands and residential areas. Rain and mudslides have also severed roads in the region.
The swiftly spreading prairie grass fire was believed to have been ignited by sparks from power lines and transformers toppled by high winds on Colorado's drought-parched front range. Evacuation orders were first issued for all residents in the town of Superior, Colorado, with a population of about 13,000, and a short time later for the adjacent city of Louisville, which is home to more than 18,000 residents. According to the county sheriff, there are no reports of people missing and no deaths, but six people were treated for injuries from the wildfire at the UC Health Hospital in the neighboring city of Broomfield. The fire on the outskirts of the Denver metropolitan area left bone dry from an extreme drought gripping eastern Colorado following several days of heavy snow in the Rocky Mountains to the west. However, forecasts called for snow to hit Denver and eastern Colorado starting yesterday. Following is a recap of tonight's major headlines. Announcement from the Ministry of Health. Material support to families of martyrs. Thousands left homeless as rains cause floods in Bolivia. Wind-driven Colorado grass fire destroys hundreds of homes, displaces thousands. That's all for, from us for now. Thanks for watching. Again, have a happy new year and a good night.